Whomever Onward Tribe. Uh, if anybody asked me when I was a kid what I wanted to be when I grow up, for the largest period of time, it was a garbage man. The idea of like hanging off the back of a garbage truck seemed like the coolest thing ever. I think to this day, I still see somebody hanging off the back of the garbage truck. That seems like a good gig to me. Uh, the other would be to be a cowboy, like a gunfighting, chasing bad guys, Clint Eastwood type, rip in the modern era type cowboy. And, and uh, I got to live that out a little bit. When I came home from college, when I was playing ball in college, my mom lived up in the mountains of Colorado, and I worked on a guest ranch out there where city slickers would kind of come in, go on horseback rides, all kinds of different you know things they could do while there. But I got, I got to work in the horse program, which was great. We got to be on rides every day and be out in this beautiful country and kind of pretend to be cowboys, throwing ropes uh, in roping competitions and things like that. I, I enjoyed it. But truth be told, I was more or less pretending to be a cowboy. It wasn't like I grew up in that and that was the, the actual job I was pursuing. But on that ranch, there was an absolute cowboy and his name was Junior. Junior was probably, when I knew him, I think in his early 70s, he was fitter than anybody on the ranch. Tight, you know, lean silhouette, bronc kind of, bronc and uh, saddle bronc and bareback bronc riders are all tight, little compact kind of wrestler builds. He just, no wasted motion in his body, scars all over him, tan skin, you know, deep gunfighter eyes, and omnipresent 24 hours a day, he had the great cigarette hanging off his lips. I mean, it looked like he jumped off a Marlboro ad from back in the day, that, that was Junior. Junior was the ranch ferryman, so that if you don't know anything about horses, you have to shoe horses so you know that horses have horseshoes. Someone needs to file down that, that hoof bed and, the, and they basically nail that is a horse's hoof, put you know shoes on it so they protect their feet as they're running around in, in, in wild country. And it's back-breaking work. If you've never seen anybody shoe a horse, it is bent over, holding a horse's foot and doing the work. So Junior was one of those guys that just, you wanted to be around. He, he just offered gems and kind of knowledge. And, and I, I had this sense at a young age that being around the type of men I wanted to become would be a great way to kind of get myself on that path. So if Junior was on the ranch working, I was always sitting right there, listening to what he had to say. So one day he's shooing our horses and he was shooing a horse named Cody. Horses are in general neutral to, I think, pretty kind animals. Every once in a while you get a mean one, and Cody was. He didn't like people touching his feet. He was very, very sensitive, but Junior's been doing this so long, he can he can shoe any horse. But he gets down to the last kind of rear, um, you know, call it rear left, left uh, foot of Cody. And what you might not see if you don't know about shoeing horses is they, once they get everything filed down and, and the horseshoe shaped, they drive these little metal tacks through the horse's, you know, the shoe and the horse's nail bed and bend it over. Doesn't hurt the horse, it's just like a nail bed, no big deal. But as Junior's going to whack in this, um, this nail, I see Cody do a little shift, he goes and hammers it. I can't imagine the timing of it, but Junior basically drives the nail through his finger. Like just, it's a mistake, thing goes through his finger. Now Junior literally like looks this tack. I see Junior as I'm sitting there, doesn't take the cigarette out of his mouth, grabs the tack, kind of whittles it, pops it out, blood comes out on both sides. He takes that tack, puts it right back in his pocket, waste not, want not, and I kid you not, puffs on his cigarette, gets that thing white hot, tsst, tsst, cauterizes the wound, carries on Shoe and Cody. You can understand why I'd want to spend time around you. So I remember one day at the end of the day, we would release all the horses out into the pasture to kind of spend the night out in open country, one of the beautiful fields where they could eat and drink before they came in the next day to do their work, riding guests up through the mountains. And it was just one of the most beautiful times of day. You can imagine the sun setting in the west in Colorado, gorgeous purple mountains, just spectacular. And then these, you know, 80 some odd horses running out and shaking the cobwebs out from the day. It was just a, a perfect part of my day. I'm walking with Junior and Junior had a dog with him. It was a black and tan coon hound. If you know this, this dog, it's this kind of lopey hound dog, beautiful long legs, really, really athletic dog, although, you know, very, very chill. But Junior and I are walking along this irrigation ditch looking at where muskrats or something might be cutting into this ditch and I see Junior's dog out in front of us and I just notice for a second the whole time as I'm watching this dog it kind of changes into a different almost rhythm or a different movement and it was interesting I, I noticed it and I could see it and I, I caught out of the corner of my eye that Junior was looking at me and he had a little smile on his face now, now, now to keep this in perspective Junior did not suffer fools I'd worked at that ranch for four years. 
My name is Rourke. This is an old Irish family name. Not a lot of people have that name. So there's a good chance if we spend any time together, you're going to rem remember my name. Junior had never called me by my name in the four years we'd worked together. He'd just make up a name that started with R every time we were talking to each other. He's just that type of guy. But I remember seeing him, you know, looking at me. He's got a smile on his face. And uh, I, I knew it was an opportunity. I said, Junior, what am I seeing in your dog? I noticed that it went from this, you know, trot to kind of something different. I don't understand it. And he, uh, he kind of has a smile on his face and he says, Rolf, what you're seeing in that dog is something that I like to call a harmonic gait. And I said, a harmonic gait. He's like, that's right. And I said, uh, Junior, can you define a harmonic gait? And he says, Rory, a harmonic gait is the rhythm that God intended for an animal. I was blown away when he said it. It was just like the coolest thing I'd, I'd ever heard. And we talked a little bit more about it, but he just said, look, you know, every once in a while, you'll hit a rhythm or a pace or a style or a function and a level of movement that is the absolute highest expression of what we can do as to what, you know, your body is capable of. I remember this, this was 1996 when he was telling me this story. In the summer of 2006, I'm, I'm on one of the most combat heavy, violent deployment in the history of the SEAL teams. We're in gunfights constantly, we're in the fight. And I remember one particularly ugly gunfight where I'm running a combat operation about a, a you know, a, a numerically capable force. I've got a bunch of my guys that are in a gunfight. I'm managing the thing. I'm talking to aircraft up above me. I'm talking to two different squads within my, you know, radio pouches here. I've got one injured Iraqi that's on the ground. I've got to medevac him out of there so he can, you know, get to hospital and definitive care. The chaos of it was otherworldly, but I remember just in a moment, I'm sure it was a thousandth of a second, but it felt like an eternity. A little smile came over me, and I wish I could have shared with Junior that in that moment, I, I was operating at my harmonic gate. I knew exactly what to do. I knew exactly what calls to make. I knew how to function and make my team the, the, the ultimate expression of what they're capable of doing. I share this story, one, because I like telling the story, and two, Find your harmonic gate. It can come in many, many forms, but find that thing for which you were intended. Refine it, learn it, get great at it, and let the world see what you're capable of doing. Ever onward.